I eat problems for breakfast. I take no for vitamins. I love it when people tell me, you can't do that, right? They don't, you can't do that. No, Dr. Fraser, come on, come on down to earth. No, 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 not, not for me, right? And, and I dare you to tell me I can't, and I dare you to tell me no, because now I'm committed to making a fool out of you. I'm going to show you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you. I'm going to do it elegantly and eloquently, like, like what Dr. Boyce has done. I'm going to get it done. Mm. One of the other cornerstones is our whole notion around financial literacy, and financial education. We are financially illiterate people, Dr. Boyce. I, I hate to say it, not all Black people, just most Black people who are financially illiterate. One point, what, $1.5 trillion annual economy? If we were a nation to be the 16th richest nation in the entire world, but our money goes in one direction away from us and with some of America's most conspicuous consumers. We are the consumption class and they are the merchant class. They make stuff, we buy stuff, right? So if we don't fix that in the 21st century, all the studies and all the trends is particularly the one by um, the Institute of Policy Studies published in April of 2016, Wikipedia, that study, brothers and sisters, and see what the conclusion of that study is. The conclusion of that study is this. By 2053, if nothing changes, when majorities become the major uh, minority, when the majority becomes the minority, by 2053, if nothing changes, Black median wealth will be zero. So if nothing changes, what they're predicting, because white folks ain't helping us, but they can't count. They love data analytics and data points. They love trends and they publish reports and studies. And they say, here's how you're trending, brothers and sisters. By 2053, if nothing changes, you ain't gonna have no money. So you will effectively work your way into a second slavery. Try to live in a market-based economy in a democratic capitalistic society without any median income. See what that does for you. Last summer, Kanye West, errantly said, black folks chose slavery. Wrong, we didn't. Now we have a choice. We've got about 30 years to begin turning this around. Now we have a choice. So will our grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren say about us if we make the wrong choice, we chose slavery this time? We have a choice. So I believe that financial literacy, financial education, entrepreneurial thinking, is the primary 21st century goal and objective for black people, that economics must become the new black power. Economics must become the new black power in the 21st century. So let me say the next things and still be loved. And yes, I am black. I know I may look white, but God has put me in this special package so that I could be a double agent. Okay, so I could be, yes, I could be around them and I can hear what they really think. You don't want to know what they really think, all right? So let me say this and still be loved. To be black and beautiful means nothing in this world unless you're black and powerful. Interpret powerful as money, powerful. You cannot be black and proud and niggas too. Let me repeat that for you. You cannot be black and proud and niggas too. You're going to have to make a choice. White folks are planning for three generations and we're planning for Saturday night. Mm -hmm. We must fix this in the 21st century. We are outside of our own spiritual teachings. Proverbs 13, 22 tells us what? A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Front page article in USA Today not long ago, I hope you saw it, about black baby boomers and their money. And the article simply said that black baby boomers will be the first generation of Africans in America to raise another generation of Africans in America that will not do better than them. Our ancestors must be rolling over in their grave. In 400 years of our people in this country, we are the only generation to raise another generation that will be worse off. We need our black asses kicked. Count me out of that. I will not contribute to that egregious statistic, and neither will you. If you're listening to Dr. Watkins, you're not going to contribute to that statistic. We have got 
to fix this because the goal, brothers and sisters, is to win, not to look like we're winning. Mm. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it. That's looking like you're winning, but your ass ain't winning. Mm. We are addicted to instant gratification versus delayed gratification. And we are addicted to television. Mm. A.C. Nielsen did a study two years ago, Dr. Watkins, that rated TV consumption by cultural group. I have the study. And what it found is that African-Americans watch 40% more television than any cultural group in the history of humankind. On average, we watch 72 hours of television a week. That's 10 hours a day. Any black person watching 10 hours of television a day needs their ass kicked. Mm. Now, here's what's happening when you watch 10 hours of television a day. You are exposed to 900 commercials and you are turned into a consumption machine. Mm. That's why we are the consumption class and they are the merchant class. They make stuff, we buy stuff. We're consuming television. What is the stuff that comes on television? What is it called? It's called programming. That's what it's called programming. You're being programmed, right? You're being programmed. And because of the egregious uh, treatment of Black people, the, 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 the almost the changing of our DNA in terms of how we see ourselves, that, that not only do white folks see us stereotypically as only being able to sing and dance, play football, baseball, or basketball, or gang bangers, that's a stereotypical image. That's what you see most uh, in terms of black people on, on television. Not only do they believe that stuff, but black people believe it too. Mm. 